Vermont Public Television is pleased to present for the first time on television, Disappearances by Vermont filmmaker Jay Craven. This coming-of-age adventure is set during Prohibition and is based on a novel of the same name by Vermont author Howard Frank Mosher. We hope you'll enjoy this film starring Chris Christofferson and Genevieve Bougeot, but first we'd like to take a few minutes to visit with the filmmaker to learn more about the making of Disappearances. What I liked about Disappearances was the, the sense of larger-than-life characters. I liked the magical realism. Um, I like all of the Mosher stories because they have the flavor of a Western. Uh, and this notion of the last great whiskey running expedition across the border, come hell or high water, uh, and uh, the worse things get, you know, the more ebullient and completely almost elated Quebec Bill is and just this e eternal optimism of this character. I found, you know, really sort of fun, uh, compelling, uh, human in its own way. And I, I loved Cordelia as a character. I thought that sure, her sort of this, this notion of a school teacher in a one-room schoolhouse Him? you know, steeped in Emerson and Thoreau and Shakespeare and, dr you know, drilling it into the kids and sort of almost living by it. I mean, the last words that uh, Cordelia says before she disappears. Mine and yours. Mine, not yours. Earth endures is from Emerson. And this notion that, and somebody said, well, how could this woman be this way? I said, think 19... 32, a woman who was born, you know, at the time of the Civil War and who, without media, without all of these, you know, interfering media or technologies or information sources coming at her, is just late at night with a kerosene lamp reading Emerson and reading Macbeth. And, you know, it was a different person, different kind of person. So this notion of drawing from that period in New England, in Vermont, and from what I call Howard's historical imagination. It's not historical fact. How whiskey was run during that time has some similarities to what you see in Disappearances, but it really is from Howard's imagination of that history. And Jean Cocteau, the great filmmaker and poet and artist, said all film should aspire to the condition of a dream. And I think there is something unique about film that takes us into another world, including an unworld that, another world that can draw from the unconscious. And so that idea interested me. I open the film with a quote from William Faulkner and this notion that the past continues to speak to us. Uh, and, and also that you know, relatives who have gone, who have passed on, continue to be present. Those ideas were working with me. Certainly in my life, that's true. I mean, I was raised by a grandmother that was a very vivid presence in my life, and she remains very present for me, and in some ways the character of Cordelia you know, was informed by this relationship I had with her. But I think that uh, in terms of Carcaju, he certainly represents an unresolved past. He represents a family tradition of running whiskey. He represents a, uh, probably a veteran of the Civil War. He'll pay for that whiskey. All of these ideas sort of came together for me fairly powerfully because if you were to be Quebec Bill, raised by a whiskey smuggling father, and you two were to embark on this great whiskey running expedition, wouldn't that be present? And then you look at the statistics of the Civil War and how many men became mad, really, and fled after coming back. And so for me, that was also that, that Carcajou, you know, couldn't cope, that, that this notion that he could have just vanished into Canada and become wild and, you know, outlaw and all of the rest. I mean, I think that there are these themes of outlawry and, and unresolved past and the experience of the Civil War, which culturally and how it affected Vermont. Vermont lost more men per capita than any other state in the Union. I think that Quebec Bill is a dreamer and a schemer, not terribly rooted in reality, uh, irrepressible optimist. Uh, and these are themes that work through Howard Mosher's work uh, in various ways, but I think that um, his sort of determination in the face of everything falling apart to simply push on and persist and that the thrill of the adventure is really 
everything that it's all about. It's not about the whiskey. It's not about the money. It's about undertaking this adventure. It's about ushering his son across a threshold, you know, into his own manhood or his own young adulthood, this notion of coming of age. And given the opportunity to introduce his son to what he knew, and, and as a parent of two boys, you know, I can sort of relate to it, uh, that he wants him to come into his own. He wants him to, to, to and then he does. I mean, to a certain extent, the boy becomes the father to the to the man, to a certain extent. I mean, the boy ends up ta literally carrying his father through this journey, that there is a transition that takes place. Let me down before we both break up. In this film, the, the world, the, the natural world is a source of magic and some mystery and uh, a hidden and unspoken past. And it functions that way because this, this adventure is into the natural world and it involves uh, back roads and uh, lakes and mountains and woods and all the rest. So it's partly this interaction, the, the world is a natural world, but the world is a source of some of that magic. Uh, pay close attention. Uh, there are a couple of things that, uh, uh, you know, Cordelia in particular, as a guide to the characters, is a bit of a guide to the viewer as well. And so I think Cordelia uh, helps to unlock some of the mystery if you pay close attention to her. The farm family owners of Cabot, located throughout New York and New England, hope that you appreciate Kingdom County's productions, artistry, and disappearances, certainly as distinctive as our world-class cheddar. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont is proud to help bring you disappearances. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont, independent, not-for-profit, offering health care benefits, products, and services to Vermonters, providing information on health-related topics, health management, and wellness, online at bcbsvt.com. Vermont author Howard Frank Mosher's first novel was the inspiration for the film Disappearances. VPT sat down with him to learn more about the story behind his novel. I've come to think in the years since disappearance, this probably is a hymn to irresponsibility and Quebecville is a, is a irrepressible and in some ways irresponsible character. He has a lot of um, another friend of, of mine dating back to that Prohibition era and that's uh, Wild Bill Royer as he was called, R-O-Y-E-R, -E who was a champion old-time French-Canadian fiddler and uh, sewing machine salesman and a wonderful raconteur and uh, like Quebec Bill, a man of, of um, indefatigable uh, optimism. And I think he probably has uh, some of my dad and my uncle in him too and then a great deal of, of um, invention, but he is uh, he is a larger than life character. I mean, I've never known anybody exactly like, like uh, Quebec Bill. And when I was writing the book, I was very much influenced by uh, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude and some of the other South American magical realists. And, and I continue to read those writers and to be influenced by them to some extent, but, but also by, by other uh, literary sources that use some magic like Shakespeare's The Tempest and some of uh, Dickens and the story writer Isaac Bashevis Singer. So, someone asked me, do you have a mission? Is your mission to, um, to evoke realistically the Northeast Kingdom? No, not at all. I certainly want to tell these stories uh, or some fictionalized form of them, of the, of the kingdom. But I grew up in a big storytelling family, and none of the Mosiers ever had a penny of money, but they sure did have good stories, and that's all I've ever wanted to do. And my, the, the writers I admire most, uh, particularly Dickens and Twain, and, and I think Dickens and Twain, unlike Howard Frank Mosier, have, have written profound books with profound messages, but in their, in their greatest books, Huckleberry Finn, Great Expectations, the story and the characters come first in the language. And really that's about all that's concerned me for the past uh, 50 years other than the Boston Red Sox and, and uh, you know, uh, when my kids were young, taking them trout fishing over on the hill across the road. 
Cordelia has this second sight, as she, she calls it. And if Quebec Bill is at the heart of the novel, I think Cordelia is at the, at the soul of the novel, says the person who doesn't believe in the super, supernatural, because she knows that that, that family, uh, th th there's just one thing that's, that's important, and that is that that family, despite all of the tribulations that they face, which range from the economic pressures of the Depression, they're losing their farm, to the madman who's chasing them and wants to eliminate them all from the face of the earth and the family line altogether, that family has to stay together. And I, I think as I, was, as I was working with Cordelia, I remembered my, my grandmothers who lived through the Depression and who, as their husbands were out working you know, 10 different jobs, sometimes all at once, to keep the family going economically, were the, the heart and soul of the family and kept it together perhaps in more important ways. So that's what she's, that's what she's up to. But do I believe that people can disappear and then come back in different incarnations or see into the future? Absolutely not. <laughs> I've never seen any evidence of that at all. But I love to write about it. And, and what I'm writing about is sometimes I can make myself believe in it temporarily and scare the bedevil out of myself. <laughs> I remember once when I was working on disappearances and Carcajou was just about with his, with his Civil War era cannon to take the lives of his son and grandson. It scared me so much I actually had to go out in the, in the yard and walk around and catch my breath. Almost all of the fiction, certainly all the fiction I admire, begins and, and ends with the characters. And I think if you have the right character, then it's not too hard to let the story flow out of that character. So as Quebec Bill began for me to take on flesh and blood as I was working with that, with that character, it became more and more of an anarchic wild man. Um, it became easy for me to know what my next scene would be because I would ask myself, well, now Quebec Bill is being chased by the villain Carcajou, what would Quebec Bill do in this situation? And sometimes he would, it was almost as though he was sitting right there beside me and he would help me out. So I think good fiction, as I, as I think of the fiction I ad, admire most, it almost always comes down to the characters, to, to Huck and Jim and to, uh, you know, Elizabeth um, Bennett and Pride and Prejudice and to Prospero and Miranda and the, the Tempest, I think um, a novel or a story will live and die by its characters. And maybe that's why it's so hard for me and takes so long to get the handle on a story, years and years usually, because I'm looking for a way to try to get that character to, to come alive. And usually what the techniques that worked for the last book don't work for this one. So there really is something just a little bit magical about the, about the process.